Yes, sir. What's going on, guys? Big Rob with MakeBeerEasy.com. Today, we're going to talk about mashing temperatures. For those of you just tuning in first time, if you want to learn how to make beer easy, subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell button next to the subscribe so you get notified when I put up a new video. We're going to talk about mashing temperatures today, guys. I got my computer here in front of me. I just did a blog. First of all, cheers. I'm sitting here holding this pint without even having a drink. And it's, it's a Monday, the week before Christmas. You know, Christmas in like four or five days. That's crazy, man. I'm, I'm stressed out in my head. And anyway, four kids, man, it'll put you, it'll put you broke. That's what it'll do. Cheers. We're going to talk about mash temperatures today. Uh, mashing, a very uh, crucial um, component to... Brewing. Um, beer is, all, all alcohol is clearly uh, made from uh, yeast fermenting um, sugar. Okay, so with beer, the yeast clearly comes from the grains, the barley, the wheat, um, in order, but in its natural form, um, can't, there is no sugar for the yeast to be able to consume and to ferment. Okay, so this is where mashing comes into play. So you take your crushed grains and basically, um, you soak them in hot water for at least an hour, um, and as they're soaking, the malt enzymes are activated within the, um, the, 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 the kernels, the grains, um, and they begin converting the starches within these grains. Um, these malt enzymes start converting the starches within the grains into the ferment fermentable sugars that the yeast needs to do its job. So that's what mashing is. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to do a big talk on everything involved in mashing right now. I just want to focus on um, the temperatures um, because different temperatures play a different role in how your beer is going to turn out. Um, I will tell you that uh, the amount of mash water you use is important um, and you should strive for typically a ratio 1.25 to 1.50 quarts of water per pound of grain. If you do kgs, well, get online and do a little conversion yourself. Um, I always say, sometimes I worry about that. Sometimes I do the calculations. Um, a lot of times I don't. This is make beer easy. Um, so what I'll do is I will, and here I am giving you, I said I wasn't going to do a training on mashing. I'm going to give you a little one on mashing. This is make beer easy. I keep it real simple. So what I do is I, I strive to have the mash um, look like the consistency of porridge. Porridge, okay? Oatmeal, okay? So that, that stuff your mama used to feed you for breakfast. You put the brown sugar on top of Should look like that. And then what I'll do is I when I drain, when I when I when I when I if I'm brewing a bag, whatever, when I when I when I separate the grains from the wort, I then in the kettle, in the boil kettle, I then sparge, okay, so I sparge up to my pre-boil level. Okay? Uh, you can go you can you, you can go on and do calculations, it'll tell you, all right, use this much. Uh, mash water for this amount of grains, and uh, then you'll need this much sparked water. You can definitely do that, and they've got calculators online, but this is the way I do it. I just keep, I, I, I typically just make it look like it's porridge, um, just, you know, cover the grains just enough, and then then I'll sparge up to my pre-boil level. Okay, good enough? Uh, okay, so mashing temperatures. Um, required mashing temperature beers between 145 degrees Fahrenheit and 158 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 63 degrees to 70 degrees Celsius. I did that conversion for you. Uh, most beers will actually mash between 150 to 154 Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's 65 to 67 degrees Celsius. Um, it's important, the, the temperature range is important because mashing at the higher end of the scale, okay, so if you're going to go between 155 and 158, 68 to 7 degrees Celsius, uh, it's going to result in the production of more unfermentable sugars, okay, or what are referred to as longer sugars, which are harder for the yeast to ferment, which depending on the style of beer is a good thing, okay, think, think stouts and some pale ales. Um, because when you don't have as many fermentable sugars, it gives you a fuller body beer, okay? Um, the opposite is also true. When you have lower mash temperatures, typically between 140 to 150 Fahrenheit, which is 60 to 65 Celsius, results in the production of shorter sugars, which the yeast have no problem fermenting, and they consume up very fast, okay? Uh, this results in a, a drier, thinner uh, mouthfeel, okay? Now... As I said, the sweet spot for most beers um, where we recommend you aim for is 150 to 154 uh, Fahrenheit, 65, 67 
Celsius. Okay, so most of my beers, sometimes I'll go 148, but typically about 152-ish uh, in there. Results in excellent conversion of starches and sugars. And yeast can easily ferment the bad boys and also provides a um, medium mouthfeel and body. Okay, so it's kind of the sweet spot. Um, okay, um, let me see what else I want to tell you. Um, and on this blog post, as I say, this is Make Beer Easy. Um, we keep things super simple. We keep them easy, hence the name. Uh, so don't over, it's really hard to screw up beer. I mean, you, you might mess the recipe up, but you, you know, if you follow some basic principles, you're still gonna have some decent taste in beer. Uh, many new brewers uh, get really worried about hitting their mash temp and they stress if they're, you know, five degrees over. Don't worry about it. Um, five degrees ain't gonna matter that much. Keep in mind back in the day, guys, beer they didn't have thermometers when they were making beer in the ancient times um and apparently they made pretty good beer so don't, don't stress it keep it easy babies make beer easy okay your mashing temperature is also referred to as your strike water temperature which is the temperature of the water that you are going to mash with that <clears throat> temperature of water you're going to mash um let me think try this again your mashing temperature is strike water temperature which is the temperature of the water before you add your grains, okay? So you're gonna mash into it, okay? Um, a lot of novice brewers will make the mistake of saying, all right, I wanna mash at 153 Fahrenheit, and that's what they heat the water up to. Okay, this is a mistake, um, because what happens is there's massive heat loss when the grain is added, okay? So uh, depending on your system, um, you can also lose heat because you have a cold mash ton, okay? So you're going to, dough in or put all your grains in you're going to stir it up and all of a sudden your temperature if you were shooting for 153 and you mashed in at 153 your temperature is going to be at 143 and now you're screwed you got to try to get it up high okay so your strike water needs to be warmer than your target mash temperature so the the water before you add grains is called your strike water it needs to be warmer than <clears throat> what you're striving to mash at okay uh, typically somewhere between 8 to 12 degrees is what i find um, again it's going to depend on you know the amount of grains and things like that um, there are calculators online that you can use on this blog post that i did which i'll put a link under this video um, i link to a calculator that i like to use it'll tell you exactly you know you put in your grains uh, it'll tell you exactly um, what temperature your strike water should be okay cool so keep that in mind now, if you screw it up, and on brew days, things get screwed up. One of the first beers I ever brewed at my brew pub, we ended up calling it the uh, Up and Down Pale Ale because we were getting used to this new system we had. And man, we had the mash water was up in temperature, and then we'd try to bring her down to the right target, and we'd drop way down below. And then we'd try to bring her back up. <laughs> and it, it, it was a ton of fun. We were just laughing because it was so stupid. But we were, we were just figuring out the system. Beer turned out great. Um, turned out just fine. So you, that, that just goes to show you can screw it up. And then we sold it. People loved it. I loved it. It was really good, kind of like a Sierra Nevada. We called her the up and down pale ale because it's mashing up and down, up, up and down we went. Anyway, so to fix it, because you will screw it up from time to time, I'm going to give you some tips. So um, if you have a low mash temperature, okay, so how to fix low mash temperature. If you were shooting for 154 and you ended up with 145. Okay, uh, one option is you can add some warm, warm water. Um, it's a common method if you don't have a heating element, simply add some warm water, okay? Um, could be boiling water, could just be real warm water. Um, slowly add it in, stir around, take your temperature reading, you gotta adjust again, add some more water. If you've got a heating element, obviously turn that on. Turn it on low because it won't take a lot to um, crank her up and watch it for scorching on the bottom. Okay, so if you got a burner, like if you're doing a BIAB, brewing a bag, probably got a propane burner. If you got one of these all in one, the two of them that I got here, um, you turn the electric element on, um, but go easy because you can quickly go over. Okay, that's what happened with what I was talking about. Um, okay, um, let me see. <clears throat> what was I saying here about. Um, uh, bu, 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 bu. Uh, so yeah, you can stir it. It's also saying you can boil off too, which is um, you're just going to, this is just so you don't scorch the bottom and you're um, evenly distributing because you want it. There's a difference in temperature between the top and the bottom um, in a mash tub in the middle. Um, so you want to have it evenly distributed. So one thing you do is you can boil off, which is just basically take a, a jug or a pot and put it under the spigot um, and then just pour it back on top and then stir it up type of deal. And now you're kind of transferring the hotter um, wort 
to the top where it's cooler and you're, you're, you're going to get a more equalized um, um, water temperature. Um, you can use a handheld element, which is basically, um, uh, what do they call those, heat sticks. Um, it, you can now buy these things. People used to make them before. Don't make them, man. I didn't, and they're hot. These things get hot. People burning themselves. Ah, oh, man, don't do that. I wouldn't make them. There's a lot of DIYs on there. Um, I've never recommended them before. Uh, but now you can buy handheld ones that you can purchase them, hands by. Um, you hold that bad boy in there, and they heat her up fast. Okay, so... Um, that's an option too. And decoction mash is your last option. So back in the day, um, before they had thermometers, in order to get the mash right, what they would do is they would, they would actually take a third of the mash out and they would boil it. I'm pointing at my stove, you can't see it. They boil it and then they put it back in. And they do that a few different times, but you can do that once. Okay, or whatever, twice if you want, but probably once is gonna be enough to raise the temperature up quite a bit, okay? And it also adds different, doing, doing a decoction, I don't even know how to pronounce it right, but decoction is what I'm calling it, mash. Um, it, it, it can also add some additional body and some unique flavors to your beer as well. Okay, so now we're, we're almost there. I'm gonna finish this up with how to fix a high mash temperature. So if your mash temperature is too high um, and you need to bring her down, what do you do? Well, number one, if you've got an immersion chiller, uh, hold on. All right, here's that one, that one kicking around here. Uh, filled with all kinds of other shite. You got an immersion chiller, you can drop that bad boy in, um, just like you were cooling your wart uh, when you're done the boil, okay? You can run that. Um, you can add ice packs. So ice packs are a good option compared to the next two that I'm gonna tell you. Um, so I'm talking like, uh, keep, keep, because this is before the boil, so you don't even have to, I mean, make sure they're clean, but you're gonna boil after you mash, you don't have to, they don't have to be terribly sanitized. They don't have to be sanitized at all, just clean. Um, frozen pop bottles, soda bottles, um, you know, the blue ice packs, whatever. Um, just freeze some of those, have those on hand. Toss those in, stir the stir up a little bit, and that'll bring the temp down. It's better than the next two options um, because the next ones add ice cubes. Um, ice cubes a good option, and it'll bring it down quick. But now you're adding volume, okay? So now you're adding more volume, more liquid. Um, so now you're going to have to be if if you've if you've done your sparge calculations, you're going to have to redo them, or you're going to have to you're going to have to do what I do. Basically, is you're just going to have to when you're done when you're sparging. You're gonna to have to sparge up to your pre-boil level, okay? So you're just gonna to have to like watch it and see instead of already having all right. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use whatever two gallons of sparge or what have you. Um, same with the next one, which is to add cold water. Um, just like when we we're trying to bring a temp back up, we added hot water. You can do the same thing with cold, but again, now you're adding more volume of water, so you're not gonna be able to sparge with as much, okay? So you gotta keep an eye on that. <clears throat> um, how much time is this? 1247. Um, I, I got a couple of big frequently asked questions. Um, at least one good one here. Um, what temperature is too high to mash? Um, you, you never want to um, um, have, have, you never want to have a target mash temperature over 158 degrees. However, it is not until you get up to 168 to 170, basically mash out temperatures, that you run the risk of killing the enzymes and stopping the conversion process from happening. If you hit there by mistake, don't panic because it actually takes up to 10 minutes for those en enzymes to start being destroyed. So if you hit up to 160, don't, or 168 to 170, again, mash up temperatures, don't panic and shut her all down. It's like, oh, it's like I'm dumping this stuff. It, it, I've, I've ruined it. You haven't. Just get her down as quick as you can. Okay? Um, I already talked about how do you measure mash temperatures. Clearly a thermometer, but you can, you can do different things. Um, I would take it at different levels. You can do different levels um, and then take, um, if you want to get real technical, if you did three different levels, bottom, top, and medium, and then, you know, just, just average it out. Um, <clears throat> um, and then just what I do is I just give the mash a good stir before I take a measurement. And then I just kind of stick it down towards the middle. So that's how long it works for me. And how long to mash? That's a question that was asked. Um, we used to mash, man, overnight in my brew pub because long brew day, um, trying to run the business as well, so I'd throw I would throw the mash on at night, and then come back in the morning, good to go. Um, you're, you, there's no point in mashing over an hour to two um, because all the conversions already happened. Um, if you go over 24 hours, um, things are going to start to turn sour. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you get some info. There's a blog post link under this video so you can go and read all about this. While you're over at the blog, I give away free recipes. So head over there. I give away my top five from my my brew pub. Head over there and grab them. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. You got to hit the little dingy bell next to the subscribe thing too. So the good old YouTube lets you know when beer up puts a uh, post up. And that's what I got for you guys. And just uh, keep in mind the beer. Oh, so much more than a breakfast drink. Oh.